I got me a Hasbro Star Wars The Black Series, Obi-Wan Kenobi Jabim. Let's crack it open. <music> Greetings, toy heads, and welcome to another episode of Go Figure with me, your host, Eli Williams, here on the Digitally Rebastard Network, the action figure show about news, reviews, collecting tips, customizations, kit bashing, everything that goes into this fun, nerdy hobby that you and I both love. And in this episode, we're going to be doing an unboxing and review of the Hasbro Star Wars The Black Series, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Jabim. Uh, this would be the final fight between him and Darth Vader, the uh, costume that he had on. Uh, I decided to pick this up because it was on sale on Amazon, and uh, so here it is. So let's have a look. We've got the windowless packaging, which is allegedly, uh, by rumor, soon to disappear and go back to windowed packaging. Uh, we've got Star Wars The Black Series. There you can see Obi-Wan Kenobi and all his Obi-Wan Kenobiness uh, right down here. Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi from the series. Obi-Wan Kenobi, Jabim, warning, choking hazard, don't put Obi-Wan Kenobi in your mouth. Probably poke your throat with a lightsaber. And uh, Ages 4 Plus, uh, Hasbro, package-free, plastic-free packaging, blah, 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 blah. On the side here, we've got the artwork for the collage. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi Jabim down there on the bottom. On this side, we've got uh, digital rendering with the picture, multilingual, plastic-free packaging, Star Wars Black Series. On the back here, we've got a uh, blurb about Obi-Wan Kenobi. If you don't know who Obi-Wan Kenobi is, you need to get out. Uh, and uh, get out more. Don't get out of this. Watch this video. Uh, number 11 in the wave, um, we've got Jibbery Jabbery Legal Jargon, and we've got ages 0 to 3, you know what that means. If your child is not born yet, they shouldn't play with these toys. That's right, you're welcome. And Disney Hasbro, and then on the bottom here, we've got more Jibbery Jabbery Legal Jargon, Houses of Klingon, and Barcode! And there we go, let's grab Trusty, pew! And... Release Obi-Wan into the world. When we take him out, he'll be like, hello there. All right. Stupid piece of paper. And the tray. And there we've got the lightsaber. Get that out. Hopefully I got one that's... I know people... I know some people have been getting them that are bent... Uh, and I hope that I am not one of those people, and I'm not. The handle's a little bent, but they're soft rubber. Okay, got that, and then let's get him out. I think got him just mummified in here. How am I supposed to get him out of there? Let's see here. All right, well, we're just going to tear the cardboard. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to tear the cardboard. All right. Uh, there we've got him, and he is out. Let's put this stuff... There's something else in there? Feels like there's something in there, but I don't think there is. All right, got this, got that. Put all this together, stupid piece of paper. And we'll set this aside down there on the floor. And we've got him ready for the pedestal. Okay, here we've got him on the pedestal. Let's take a look at his one accessory, uh, which is the Obi-Wan Kenobi lightsaber. And uh, as most of them, the blade pops out. Um... Put that back in. Uh, this looks like a new sculpt. This is uh, quite different. It's got some really good gold paint apps, goldish copperish paint apps on there. Uh, one on the igniter and then one up by the blade emitter. Um, it's got the little notch there, so that will go in his belt. Um, this is a much more translucent. This is one of the newer plastic blades. It's much more translucent blue, uh, a brighter blue. Um, that looks really good. I'm, I'm digging that a lot. Um, looks super good. I like it. Yep, yep, yep. So there we go. Obi-Wan Saber. And this is, uh, this is very reminiscent of, uh, this is, this is the beginnings of where it ends up in A New Hope. And then here we've got uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. And he stands at approximately between, right between five and three quarters and six inches tall. Right in there. Let's take a look at this sculpt. Uh, first off, let's take a look at that 
face sculpt is really nice. Let's go ahead and take his robe off here. Um, the sleeveless, like a vest robe or something. Let's just pull that off for the time being. We can look at this. Um, that's pretty good. That's actually pretty good on the face sculpt. That looks like Ewan McGregor. Um, more so than the first one. I think they really nailed, they really nailed it on this. I like the hair. The hair is a nice sculpt. It's got some nice dry brush in there. Um, really good. This is very, very reminiscent of the, uh, the Jedi mullet from Attack of the Clones. Uh, that looks super good. Um, we've got the brown tunic with the cream colored, uh, shirt underneath there. There's the classic Jedi belt. Oh, wait a minute. He's got a... He must have had a gun. Did he have a gun? Hang on a second. Okay, yeah, he did have a gun. It was it's still... That was the thing I was feel, feeling. I was like, is there still something in there? Yeah, it was this, this blaster pistol. So, yeah, I don't know if this is exactly the same one that was on the original release or not. But, uh, yeah, it's a uh, very, very shiny, gunmetal-y looking... A uh, little blaster pistol there. Uh, so, yeah, I almost missed that. If it wasn't for that holster, I'd have been like, oh, no. Uh, all right. So, anyway, back to the, <laughs> to the sculpt. We've got a holster there on the belt for the gun. Wow. And then uh, here we got the belt all in brown going all the way around. Looks really good. I like this costume. I really do. I like this costume. I'm not crazy. I wish they would have done the knee-high boots. But uh, that would have made him look more like a Jedi, and he was obviously trying to conceal that. But we got some dark uh, chocolate brown pants here going down to some, uh, I don't know what you'd call those. I don't know. They're not socks. They're just, I guess that's just like the under layer of, the, uh, of what he's wearing under the pants there. They wear an awful lot of layers in the desert because he was, you know, I don't know. But I uh, got some brown boots here. Um, I don't know if those are maybe the maybe those are the boots, and he's wearing them up underneath these pants. Uh, that could be. So they'd go right up to about there. But um, really nice sculpt. I like the look of it. It looks really really good. Um, so let's go over articulation. Uh, we've got the head, which is a ball joint going into the upper torso with a dumbbell going up into the head. I'm assuming. Um, we can, eh, I don't want to pop it off. That's what it is. I can tell by looking at it. Uh, head all the way around and uh, really good down. Not a whole lot of back with that mullet going on there with the party in the back. Um, but uh, nice tilt. I like this design. I like the peg with the, on the neck going into the torso with the dumbbell on the head. It really, really works. Um, and then here we've got the shoulders, which are kind of hindered by this upper tunic uh, going on. Um, it is a soft rubber, and it is a separate piece, but it uh, it's really hindering the arms going up, so that's about all you can get there. Uh, arm will go all the way around, but you're gonna, gonna have a tough time with it. Um, you got the uh, elbow hinge with the swivel, and then down to the wrist with a wrist swivel, which is kind of hard to do with this the way the sleeve is. But um, the this wrist is I can't even tell if that's up and down or in and out. But uh, same with the other side here. We've got the sleeve, but uh, this is yeah this is an up and down. Uh, uh, wrist on uh, hinge on this one. I guess I can get that one to go around. Hmm. A little bit of a too much sleeve there. They probably should have just made this with sleeves, but I, I don't know. I think maybe in the show that he actually wore that without sleeves. Then we've got a ball joint at the waist here for some hula hoop action and some waist swivel, which I love. Big, big points for me on that. Uh, legs all the way to there. That's about all we're getting there on that. And uh, we do have the thigh swivel right there. Not a drop-down ball joint, looks like, no. And then we've got a single knee, which is unfortunate. Um, so single elbow, single knee. Hmm. That's kind of a lose-lose in my book, but, you know, that's all right. 
It'll still look good on the shelf. And then we've got detents on the feet. I will say this, the joints on this are really smooth. Like there's no, there's no, you know, uh, sticky, bah. it, it, it moves, it moves very well. Um, so, you know, no problems there. Um, but yeah, detents on the feet and then a forward rocker. Let's put his robe back on, or I don't know exactly if you'd call this a robe or what you would call this, but, uh, um, this has that weird hood thing going on with it too, where it doesn't lay very well. That's probably going to have to be, I'm going to have to wet that down. I usually just kind of pop them inside out on these guys and, uh, get them to where they'll lay down a little better. So usually if you just pop these inside out, then it will kind of fold down and work. Uh, let's get his saber in his hand the hands are very soft so you're not going to have a whole lot of issue getting the uh getting the saber in his hand um well there we go looks really good um got some got some articulation problems but it looks really good so uh let's pop him off the pedestal and we'll line him up with some other characters and see how he scales up all right, here we've got him with the Hasbro Marvel Legends series, Stan Lee, the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified series, Shipwreck, the Mattel Jurassic World Amber Collection, John Hammond, and the Mattel DC Universe Classics, El Dorado. Um, all in all, uh, I'm satisfied with him. He's okay. Um, like I said, there's, you know, no double, no double knee, no double elbow. I get no bicep swivel because it's, you know, the Jedi and they're wearing a tunic and blah, blah, blah. The shoulders have got some issues because of that tunic. Um, but, um, you know, he'll look good up there once I've gotten. I got the, uh, I'm going to be pre ordering the uh, battle damaged Vader as well. Um, that, I think that goes up on pre order on Target for uh, like the 19th of July. So I'm going to try to get one of those before all the bot scalpers get it but um yeah i'm I, i'm gonna have to give him i gotta uh seven out of ten you know i'm being kind i should go six out of ten but you know seven out of ten because it's obi-wan kenobi and his lightsaber looks cool and he looks cool just some articulation issues so that'll do it for this episode thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed that please remember to like comment and subscribe curse smash that bell so you can get information on all the good things coming out of the digitally rebastered network you all have a great week and a great day i'll see you next time and until then don't forget to get your figure on take care